everyone, um, Brittany here. I wanted to um, make this quick little video. Sorry if my voice sounds a little different. I've been getting over a cold. Um, I think I'm finally on the mend, and excuse me, I'm taking a drink of coffee really quick. Coffee's probably not the best thing when you're getting over a cold, but that's what I wanted. <laughs> um, I, um, uh, anyway, I, um, I've been meaning to make a video and I just have not, I've been a little lazy and have not wanted to have, not, not that I haven't wanted to, I just have not taken the time to clear up a room on my phone so that I can actually film something. So <laughs> here we are. But anyway, um, so this, this was a spread. This is in, uh, on a back note spread, uh, note page spread, um, in my Perugia Press Mustard Seed Planner. And what these pages originally looked like were kind of like this. They said, take a note, and they had this little decor, and this was kind of a mess. I probably wouldn't have done it this way had I waited a little bit. And then the next one, I, um, it's, uh, it, it's awful. I hate, I hate the way this, I like the idea of it. This was like a, a menu planning thing for me. Um, I like the idea of it, and maybe one day I'll kind of explain what I was trying to do. It looks disastrous, and I hate it. But <laughs> anyway, so that's that. That was my own fault. And so this is the third, or the the third. Um, uh, oh, what's it called? Spread. And what I wanted to do here was kind of make like um, a, for lack of a better term, a vision board. That's not what I call it, but that's probably the best thing that. That's probably what people would most associated with and I'll take this out for now and I'll show you what that is in a second but um I kind of wanted just kind of an image this is for anyone who doesn't know or hasn't watched my previous videos um uh I am returning to work for the first time in about seven eight years since I first even got pregnant with my son and I will be a guide at a Montessori style school um and my son will be in the grade uh, or in the in the studio classroom below me I'll be in the upper elementary and I'm really excited about it it'll be my first time working outside the home like I said in about eight years and I'm very excited about it but I also it's a it's a new season of life and one that I'm really trying to I want to really incorporate my faith into my work life as best as I can um, as best as I can and just in the sense of like I want to, um, I, I guess I just want to live intentionally and rhythmically even as a working mom. So this was something I wanted to do to kind of keep some of that at the forefront of my mind. Um, so just a few little things, I guess, of kind of not even how I want my year to look, but just kind of some encouragements for me, I guess, in just traditional motherhood and homemaking even as a working mom if that makes sense and also some encouragement to kind of stay true to myself also total side note I just noticed my hands are so dry please forgive me <laughs> they're so so dry oh it's been a warm summer um and I've clearly not been taking a uh, very good care of my skin but anyway I I'll work on that um, anyway, so just a couple things I wanted to show you how so so I guess more than anything I'm gonna call this kind of like my Christian vision board and that's not even what I want to call it because I don't like that necessarily but um I remember having a seeing um Sylvia Leon Teritis I, I might have butchered her last name but she's from orthodoxmom.com or uh orthodox orthodoxmom.com yeah uh, I'll link it below if I remember to um anyway she she put out a little prayer journal once and in that she talked about how she had a couple spreads for a vision board and she talked about how she didn't really like the term vision board because she felt like it was very self-focused. So she kind of made everything have to do with uh, being with Christ. So it was like um, just everything had to do with being in and with Christ and I really liked that idea and so that was kind of my thought process for this but um anyway I'll just I'll just explain now I guess so over here I've got um and most of these I had printed off from Pinterest um I think I've got a couple happy planner stickers but most of them are from Pinterest so this was just a really pretty like not even really watercolor although I guess it kind of is just image of the mountains kind of at sunrise and that was just really encouraging to me I love that um I'm trying to be more uh, you know, just in tune, and I don't want that to sound new agey, but just in tune with creation. 
And this is just something that really reminds me of that, of quietness and slow living and, and you know, God's creation. So I really loved that. That's something I want to remember. This quote, I don't know who it's from, um, by doing what you love, you inspire and awaken the hearts of others. And I felt that would be really good for my upcoming job, uh, first time working outside of the home and, and just being a guide for some upper elementary school kids. And I just felt like that would be a really good thing to remember. Um, these were some stickers I put in here from, I want to say illustrated faith. And I just, uh, they were just word stickers. And so it says daughter of God. And then this really, um, lovely feminine woman standing in a field of flowers. Uh, I think she's barefoot, which is like goals for me. I will, I'm barefoot whenever I can be. <laughs> and, uh, um, you can't really tell, but the ocean's out there. So I love that picture. This I got from a little printout about like, it was like a doodle of like vintage weekly cleaning, like weekly chores and such. And Sunday was just a church day. So I cut out the Sunday part and I loved the, first of all, I love that it's uh, a husband, wife, and a son because that's what my family currently is, is my husband, myself, and my son. And I also loved the connection of home to church. And I think I've shown this, in fact, I know I've shown this before, but just this thing I made on Canva um, for Indeed, a house is a little church and it's got an Orthodox church, a home, and then uh, a husband, wife, and son. And so I just really love that imagery um, of that connection between home and and church. Uh, so I love that. I put a little bee there. I don't know if I've ever explained, but I love bees. Maybe I'll explain that in a future video. Um, a little sticker uh, there from a Happy Planner sticker book. Uh, Henry David Thoreau, one of my all-time favorite like inspirational people, um, and one of his quotes, one of his many wonderful quotes that he has, uh, we are constantly invited to be who we are. Um, a reminder for myself to be true to myself, which is ultimately becoming more like Christ. So there's that. See the good in all things. I love this. Um, I don't even remember where I first saw this, but it's, I got this image from Pinterest, but I've seen a couple different ones and I've even made one myself. Um, this one is someone else's work. I don't know whose, but I found it on Pinterest. Do more of what makes you happy with happy crossed out and it's been changed to holy. So do more of what makes you holy. Um, that that is like my life's mantra. <laughs> Do more of what makes you holy, uh, not happy, holy. Um, this like uh, kind of gypsy, hippie style woman, I'm just really encouraged and inspired by that kind of style. And um, uh, anyway, I love it. So I, I love her, I think she's lovely and I just really love her look. So I put that there. Um, I also just love the head covering and just, I love it. A uh, sticker that says light, um, that's something that kind of just has been coming up in my mind a lot lately. Just, I, I think it's the Holy Spirit reminding me to be a light in the world and to shine his light through me. I love this little sticker of hands holding a heart. I just thought it was cute. A uh, sticker that says obedience from the same set of word stickers. Um, that's another thing I'm trying to focus on more is being obedient to Christ in the church. Um, to my priest, everything like that. So, uh, to my husband, all of that. So obedience. Um, I love this quote from Metropolitan Anthony Bloom and it's put over, uh, an image of the, uh, an Orthodox gospel book. And it just says, we should try to live in such a way that if the gospels were lost, they could be rewritten by looking at us and man talk about a challenge. That is just, whew, I am not there yet, but I, I want to be, <laughs> and that'll take a lifetime of work to get to that point. <laughs> um, uh, if ever in this life. Um, so anyway, uh, Aurora, um, Princess Aurora, she's my favorite Disney princess. And she also, I, I prefer all of the princesses when they're in their like pre-princess outfits. I just, I love their pre-princess outfits. They're very homemakey to me, uh, homemaker-ish to me. And I, I prefer all of the Disney princesses pre-princess, uh, attire. Um, but I love this one. She's barefoot. I think that my page is kind of it's kind of ripped there but she is barefoot in this picture once again she's got a head covering she kind of looks like a vintage pioneer peasant in a way um uh she's got animals around her she's in the woods it's just like that's like my dream <laughs> goals right there um so then on this next page uh this quote i don't know who this joan d uh, joan d Ch chittister i believe um it's the, kind of this vintage image of a of a 
uh, mom with her littles and a little girl and a little baby. And it says, I begin to understand as never before that holiness is made of dailiness. And that is so true. Um, it's, it's the little things. So it's the everyday things that we do that just make up life and and that's that's it so um one of those word quotes again gentleness that's another thing i'm trying to work on um constantly is just being gentle in how i react how i respond in my i can be very loud and i'm trying to learn how to just quiet not only my soul but also my literal voice so gentleness is something i want to focus on i love this picture um just kind of, it's very like fairy-esque to me very ethereal um, just a hand in the water with the flowers. It's just, I just love it. It's very pretty. Um, so that's kind of another creative, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, creation, um, as well as being true to myself and just, uh, embracing that feminine, you know, fairy like, uh, aesthetic, I guess that I, that I am trying to um, incorporate into my everyday life. And I'm so sorry. This is so shaky. Ah, um, this is, um, oh, why can't I think of her last name? T Tudor? I want to say her last name is Tudor. It's going to drive me crazy. Maybe I'll edit her name in. Um, why can't I think of her name? Tasha Tudor? Is that her name? Why can't I think of it? My computer's off too, so I can't even look it up. Oh, I can't think of her name and I feel so bad. Anyway, she's this really wonderful, inspiring older woman. Um, and, uh, just lives very, lived very simply and, and, um, uh, just a really inspi inspirational, uh, woman to me. So anyway, that's an image of her, uh, with a lantern outside in the snow. And I just, I love it. I love her outfit in it. You probably can't really tell very much in the, oh, it's so shaky. I'm so sorry. Probably can't tell very well, but anyway, I just love that image and the colors in it and everything. And then this is a little sticker from a paper studio, um, sticker book and it just says wild and free, uh, which is another, um, uh, that, I mean, wild and free isn't, but Henry David Thoreau has another, uh, quote that says all good things are wild and free. And, uh, he's just got so many gems. He's got a, um, why can't I think of the name of his, of his book? Walden. Um, just a wonderful, just a really interesting man. So anyway, um, wild and free. There's another, version of wild and free, of just the phrase wild and free that's wild barefoot and free and that's my that's my life <laughs> that's my that's my mantra <laughs> also uh I hate the word mantra too because it reminds me I think it's I don't know I I just there's all so many words that get used in common vernacular now that have its roots in you know Hinduism or new age religions and like mantra and you know vision board and things like that and I don't know, maybe one day I'll talk about this. I do have a tendency sometimes to be drawn towards some new age things. Um, and I've really found a, uh, I, I, I heard a, uh, a priest one time say that orthodoxy was new age before the new age movement. And there's orthodoxy, I am very attracted to the mystic, mystical aspect of orthodoxy. Um, but even within that, I have to be careful because because I do have a tendency sometimes to be drawn towards, like I even have a mood ring. I obviously don't believe in that it's actually telling my mood, but I just do enjoy certain elements of things in that world. And I'm very, I'm so grateful to Christ because I know that if I wasn't a Christian, I probably would have become, um, I probably would have gotten really into like astrology or Wiccan stuff or, you know, earth hippie, whatever, because I'm just very drawn to it. And I'm just so, so, so grateful that that's not been my, um, my story because I think that's a very dangerous world spiritually. Um, that being said, I think there's a lot of, I think there can be some truth found in that world, but I think it's very perverted outside of Christ. Um, so I, uh, where was I going with that? Why, why did I bring that up? I was saying something wild and free. I don't know. I don't know what I was saying. But there you go. There's my little, uh, I feel like I was saying something and I totally spaced what I was saying. Oh, mantra. That's what I, I started talking about how there's things like that. I've never been new age, but I, but I do think there's things like that that I try to not use certain words because they do, it to me, convey a new age 
lifestyle or a new age belief system and I, I try to separate myself from that a little bit just because I do have a tendency to sometimes be attracted to some of the elements of, of a new age, uh, of, of what a lot of new age people are into. You know, I like kind of the hippie vibe, the, you know, bohemian, you know, whatever. I like stars. I like the moon. I like nature, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So anyway, it's, and not that any, and I think I'm just learning that a lot of that, when you've come out of very evangelical Protestantism, sometimes you you kind of just through osmosis learn that all of that, anything that even remotely looks new agey is just evil. And I don't think that that's true. And so I'm learning how to embrace those things that I do love and appreciate that are part of creation and are part of even Christian faith, but in a, in a way that's also careful and aware that it can be a slippery slope. So hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. I haven't slept much the last couple of days. I've been sick. So <laughs> who knows what I'm talking about? Maybe I'll edit that out. Probably won't, but whatever. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> um, we cannot force someone to hear a message they are not ready to receive, but we must never underestimate the power of planting a seed. I don't know who said that, but I got this off of Pinterest and I just love that reminder to that it's not about forcing anyone to believe the way I do or to see things my way or to understand me or anything like that. It's all about planting a seed and that's so powerful and you can plant a seed by just being kind, by listening, by loving someone, by sharing a little snippet about your faith. Um, it doesn't have to be this big grand production. It doesn't have to be this proselytizing anything, you know, and, and it's just about loving God and loving people and that in and of itself can plant seeds and um, I just want to be reminded of that. Uh, one more little of those sticker word sticker things called to follow Jesus. That's something again I'm just trying to remember like that is my calling. I am called to follow Jesus. One of the things that the school I'll be te or I'll be I'll be working at is uh, it's about finding a calling. That's a big focus of the school is finding your calling and um I, I, of course, love that, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but as a Christian, I want to always remember, like, ultimately, I already know my calling. No matter what I'm called to do here on earth, my ultimate calling is to follow Jesus. It's to become more like Christ. So I wanted to keep that at the forefront. Um, this is an image. It's probably really poorly, like, not, probably can't see it very well, but it's this, um... I I think she's an Orthodox woman, uh, right there, a mother, and it's like they're outside, and I assume she's Orthodox. Um, I think I got this even from like a Pinterest or an Orthodox blog post or looking something up on Pinterest that had something to do with Orthodoxy. I'm not really sure, but she's wearing a head covering, and the two girls are wearing a head covering, and they're um, having like a, an afternoon tea outside, and so it's just very lovely to me. I just a mother with her children, and I just love that imagery. Um, and then finally, a quote from St. Athanasius, um, orthodoxy is what Christ taught, the apostles preached, and the fathers kept. And I love that, and I want to be reminded. And then I could not find a sticker. Oh, and there's another B, and this sticker, Grace for Today, because um, that's something I want to try to remember. Also, every day, Grace for Today. <laughs> uh, it's just one day at a time. Um, I just drew this heart because I could not find a sticker that I liked that that fit well there. Not even physically fit, but just that fit with the theme that was going to be small enough. So this is kind of what I have. And then this, I popped this out at the beginning. I got this. Um, I made this little thing to like pop in here, but I made this on Canva. So on, on the front, it's this little, it's not really a poem, but it's from jotdesign.com, which is an, a Coptic Orthodox uh, website. Um, Coptic is like um, I'm trying to think, uh, it's an, it's orthodoxy, but it's, um, not necessarily in communion with the rest of orthodoxy, but, uh, there are some differences in, in some beliefs, I think. But anyway, it's still, it's still overall, there's, there's a lot of, um, I don't know. I still view them as my brothers and sisters in Christ. And there are some differences, yes, in some theology, which is why we're not technically in communion with them, but it doesn't mean that we are not brothers and sisters in Christ. And I loved this little, they had a, they had a planner. Um, they have a, a website, um, jot.design and it's for Orthodox 
it's for Copt it's a Coptic Orthodox planner. And um, I actually found them through Perugia Press. And I loved this little poem they had. It's not it's not a poem, but it's just it just says it's called The Beautiful Orthodox Woman. And so I copied it and pasted it onto the little I made this little image on Canva. And uh, I just thought it was great. It says, the Orthodox woman kneels in awe and jumps up to her feet to serve. She leans on prayer. She lifts her loved ones up and knows there's a greater reward coming for the present struggle. She is hopeful in seasons of waiting. She fights for what is right. She fights for good. She is well-rounded. She loves the beauty of other cultures, the food, the art, the languages, the worship. She is an explorer. Just a quick side note, I... I'm taking that as the worship, um, other cultures and the worship among my fellow Orthodox Christians. I, I don't take that as like embracing all forms of worship or anything like that, uh, but different cultural worship within Orthodoxy is how I view that phrase. Cause I, I think that can be, that can be taken a little out of context. And so that's how I am viewing, I'm choosing to view that, that sentence right there. Um, she respects how the divine God has created her mind and body. She respects other women. And I would say also just people in general and their thoughts, goals, journey, and creativity. She respects it, but not again, just a little disclaimer, but not necessarily agrees with it all in terms of, you know, cause again, I think that can sometimes be a little taken out of context in our PC world. Um, but anyway, uh, I do agree, of course, though, with respecting uh, the dignity of all people. Um, she is motivated. She's a dreamer. She is warm and approachable. She embraces those around her. She laughs freely, reads intently, prays transcendently. The beautiful Orthodox woman from Jot Design. And then um, on the back, I put the Orthodox spiritual works of mercy, uh, admonish sinners, instruct the ignorant, counsel the doubtful, comfort the sorrowful, suffer wrongs patiently, forgive injuries, pray for the living and the dead. And then the corporal works of mercy, feed the hungry, give drinks, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, ransom captives, shelter the homeless, visit the sick, and bury the dead. And then I made this little thing on a, like a post-it note label or whatever to kind of just pop in here so it could be in here because this is something I also want to be reminded of this year. So anyway, that's kind of my little, I'm not even really sure what I'm calling it. Just kind of my encouragement board, I guess that's what I'll call it. My encouragement board for the year. Um, I like that better than a, than a, than a vision board, <laughs> my encouragement board or my, um, my, uh, focus, my focus. I don't know. <laughs> whatever, whatever the title of this video is, is what I decided to call it. <laughs> So anyway, this was just a little spread I wanted to share. This video was a lot longer than I was expecting it to be, but oh well. Um, I hope you're having a good day and uh, happy Monday.